Uh, I, uh, welcome to the Chaos Web Content Meeting. Uh, the primary purpose of this meeting is to uh, design, plan, and implement uh, uh, Chaos's website redesign. So welcome everyone. Uh, so last week we just kind of did an overview and uh, we started kind of you, collecting data minutes in the chat, Kevin. Yep, I'm I'm dropping that in right now. Actually. Okay, thanks. Like right as you asked that. Uh, uh, so so last week we we kind of uh, we just kind of had a high level discussion and kind of started mapping some of this out. Uh, so right now I kind of I consider this phase that we're in to be kind of the information gathering phase. So we're trying to trying to figure out what uh, what problems we need to solve in this website redesign. And part of that is understanding who our users are and what user paths they may need. Uh, unfortunately, uh, in in some of our previous discussions on user paths, uh, we're having a hard time finding explicit things that people are looking for that they can't find. They just know when they land on the website, they can't find what they want, but they're not necessarily sure what they're looking for. It's the kind of the general consensus uh, for, for new users. Uh, so if anyone has any thoughts on what a new user might need when they land on the website, that would be especially helpful. Uh, I wonder if we should do a user study. I thought about that as well. And I think um, uh, Matt had uh, put that forward as an option as too. Yeah, I think I think this study protocol would include just briefing people on open source. If they're familiar with open source already, that's better. And what chaos is about uh, in a summary way, and then have them go to the website and see if they can find something they would be curious about. If we can pull folks from our community who are relatively new, that might be optimal, or it might not be, depending how much time they've spent trying to figure out our little world here. <clears throat> so Mike, I have two comments. One, I think this is pretty anecdotal, right? Just because it's you're asking kind of what what people are seeing. I think the the landing on the, the first page is just simply overwhelming. Like, yes, you can get to the content. So it's not the content is missing. It's just the ability to find it um and i'm sure there's like a million studies that are like if you haven't if you can't help guide somebody within x number of seconds like they just bail so i kind of feel like that's something we're running into yeah. we have we have had some comments from new users who have basically said i didn't know what chaos was yep, uh, I've heard that. when i landed on the website which yeah. is which is interesting because I'm, I'm curious why they came to the website if they didn't know what it was uh so what the what that motivation was to come to the website. I agree with that. I mean, just in terms of not knowing what chaos is. Um, so I get that. Yeah, those are two that I, I, I hear. Um, with respect to a user study, that's I'm OK with that. My concern with this is timing. So it's May 26th and that's the one. Yeah, we want to get this done this summer. And like if we actually did a legitimate user study, that would take like three weeks. I, I, think I just I'm a concerned that that would back us up. We could do the user study on the tail end uh, to to ensure that the paths we have created are working. Uh, so and then and then just do our best to uh, create these paths as we see fit on the front end. I've, I've, it's been a long time, like graduate school, but I've done lightweight user studies where there's just use like tracking soft, like there, I forget what the package is and who makes it, but it would just be loaded on a laptop. I've gone to coffee shops with gift cards and just had five people perform a task. I mean, could you get this up and running, Sean, by tomorrow? By tomorrow. 
I'm just I'm like, <laughs> like, like, like yeah I or, know I know it's like you're right I mean as a you know I mean I've done it I've done it before I think the thing I think I could have it done by the end of next week I don't know I don't know about tomorrow yeah so I, I mean tomorrow I was just speaking like yeah. <laughs> like to make a point but yeah so I, I will say this so web, websites kind of follow they follow certain rules and people become accustomed to those rules uh so they they understand how to navigate a website because they've been on websites before right so the uh the actual navigation of the website uh and the the way the menus work and those things it's not something we really need to test we really need we really just need to test if they are finding that bit of information they need and we could do that in a survey uh, without without having to uh, do any eye tracking software or specialized software, which which we do have access to, by the way, at UNO. Uh, I, and I have used that before as well. Uh, I, I think it's more a ask them to complete some tasks and then survey them if they were able to find the information. Because the I think I think our our big problem is actually those user paths. Are they finding the information they need? It's not it's not necessarily are the is the navigation working correctly or the 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 software working correctly, which I, I think a uh, you know a traditional software user study would really identify that. We could also do a really lightweight poll in Slack in the commerce channel. Just say hey, what brought you to the Chaos website. Um, did you find what you were looking for? If not, or, or what were you looking for? And did you find it? And something like that. Like, I think Slack has polls. So that would be my vote is just to do a quick, like informal, um, hmm. you know, just like a- Could we write it today? Could we write it in this meeting? <laughs> it's like, I just, everything takes I mean, time. I mean, it's I think it would be like three questions. Like I, I wouldn't yeah. see it being like anything big. So and I think looks... the whole thing already in Slack. What would yeah. be the three questions? Like, let's just do it right now, because. Yeah, I think like, why did you come to the chaos website? What were you looking for and did you find it? And then maybe just general feeling about the website. Like how could we make it better for a newcomer? Maybe we start that out by saying, uh, think about the last time you visited the chaos website. Why did you, why did you visit the website? Uh, While we're doing that, I'm going to check the Slack bot integration that, or the poll integration that we already have in Slack and see like, with, if there's limitations or what that's about, because I don't know. Okay. Uh, what what information did you expect to find? And lastly, did you find it? <laughs> so three question poll, and then maybe we can do the survey on the tail end, uh, which would be a little more in depth, and we can make adjustments based on the feedback we get from the survey, uh, with the uh, yeah with, with the expectation that most of our design will be tolerable <laughs> okay so i put those three questions in there good enough minutes Let's see whose microphone was getting wacky uh maybe do a maybe do a follow-up on uh that last question uh, where did you find the information? Because hmm. uh, my, my assumption is that people are coming to the website looking for specific information, they're not finding it there, and then maybe they're finding it on the repo, or they're finding it in a Zoom meeting or in one of the, the, the newcomer sessions. If you, yeah, if you eventually found it, where did you find the information?
I think that question gets at if you uh, if you found it outside of the website or off the website, where did you find it? Okay, we're on the free plan of this uh, integration called Simple Poll, and it only will let us do five respondents. Um, so I'll look around and see if there's others. I mean, you could just put it in a Google form really fast, you know. Five. Also true. I mean, yeah. I would take five. <laughs> five is more than we have. <laughs> yeah, I looked to see how much it was to upgrade because we have 635 workspace members. It would be just um, four four thousand seven hundred eighty eight dollars a year. Oh, let's so. do it. Yeah, let's <laughs> do it. Then that's nothing. That's like oh, I'm change. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe we won't do that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. But yeah, your we could also isn't, yeah. do a uh, Google form. Would yeah, be and then just put it in Slack. Okay. So Is that okay? Question. I'm just gonna do that now. Yeah, just do it now. Just okay, make perfect. the form. You can mute yourself, take yourself off camera and just do it. <laughs> okay. When we get to the coordination thing, I do have an, a, a comment about that. So just ping me uh, the, on the agenda, the knowledge-based coordination stuff. Cool. We're there. All right, done. Uh, Hi. <laughs> welcome back. Are you done with the form? <laughs> Just about. Um, the only comment I was going to make was that um, I met with Enoch and Matt uh, C yesterday to talk about coordination for the DEI badging bot. Since we do have, um, you know, multiple people wanting to kind of contribute, even though like one of them is only a Google Star Code student. Um, and then what we decided, and, and you all can do this or not. Um, so what we are going to try is that Enoch is going to take his project, break it down into issues um, uh, for his like tasks that he wants to accomplish. He's going to self-assign those tasks. And then if anything else that Ayush or whoever wants to work on, they would just create an issue and assign themselves so that everybody knows what everybody's working on. And then if, if there's something that Ayush has an idea for something, but he sees that Enoch is already kind of working on that, it's up to that, him to contact Enoch and say, hey, I want to do this little piece. Is that okay? And then Enoch's going to coordinate that himself um, as part of his, um, his project. So uh, that's where we landed. We're going to try it and see how it works. Y'all can do what, you know, whatever we want, but um, that seemed to be kind of a straightforward way. And that way it's kind of all clear of who's doing what and when and how that all those pieces fit together. So just so this, is, this is about like how to coordinate the mentorship mentee stuff. Those correct, okay. correct, gotcha. correct, correct. And so since we do have multiple people working on multiple pieces of the project, it might make sense to have it all in one place. And then people just kind of self-assign mm -hmm. their issues that they're working on. Obviously the mentors would need to know and kind of yeah. help coordinate all that, but um, that makes sense. Yeah. So just a thought. Okay, now I'm going to go work. <laughs> So for the for the knowledge base tasks, uh, do we want to? Uh, I'm sorry, the community handbook stuff, uh, which does need to be coordinated with the knowledge base. Do we want to uh, do we want to coordinate that on the website repo, or do we want to coordinate that in the community repo? For the handbook, yeah. Um, I don't know. Like I guess one, so the a question would be is, are we going to, we have to obviously rebuild the handbook because we can't, like, we just have to delete the one off, <coughs> right? Because like, we cannot get access to it. Um, and so are we going to do something similar where the handbook is like uniquely different than the website? So I can, I can give you my thoughts on it if you'd like. Yeah, that's um, what I asked. <laughs> <laughs> so I would like the community handbook to be created completely in Markdown in the community repo. Okay. Uh, and I would like the, the uh, uh, folder structure uh, to be kind of uh, created in a way that structures it like a book, right? Chapters of the book. Uh, and then I would like that folder structure to have some sort of duplication on the website so that we are pulling we are pulling that information 
uh, based on that folder structure, kind of with those naming conventions onto the website. Uh, so the, the website is really just a lens in which to view this, this markdown. However, the, the community handbook would exist independently on its own in, the, in that markdown file if that is the place where people would prefer to look at it. Okay, so people would come to the chaos community website. And from there they can have access to the handbook. Is that correct? Yeah, and it would be it would be in a searchable knowledge based style presentation. Mm -hmm. So from a user perspective, like the handbook doesn't really feel like you're leaving the website at all. Because like right now the handbook feels like you go somewhere else. Yes. Yep. Yeah, exactly. From a from a user standpoint, uh, if you're searching for items, you don't leave the website. It just pulls the markdown up from the community handbook. I 100% agree with that. I don't like the the separation between the yeah, two that we currently I, have. I agree you, with that. Because if you search the website or you search the handbook, <laughs> they don't know about each other. <laughs> yeah. And the the folder structure would be used for to create basically the the tagging and those those searchable some some high level headers and searchable items right so okay so then would we need to maintain handbook.chaos.community anymore no no the okay. the only the the point of the point of truth the point the the place where we create the handbook and the place mm -hmm. where the main master copy of the handbook or the I'm yeah. sorry the main copy of the handbook is is on that community repo so it's it'd be easy to edit easy to it's completely open and transparent and then the website would just pull from that i i agree with that because then we can pretty easily just tell the lf like you can just get rid of that domain basically <coughs> you know what i mean which is an easy ask the domain being handbook.chaos.community because we can just turn that off um because at some point we have to like dump, like we have to make sure people don't end up at that site. You know what I mean? We have to disconnect that from the internet. And so if we just removed the, the domain, I think that would take care of it, which would be the easiest answer. And then the content, which is still pretty decent, I think, you know, could be updated. Yeah. But yeah, a lot of the content that's there can be reused and updated. Yeah, no. it just it's sourced differently. So for R Ruth and Shoya, basically, we have um, the handbook at handbook.chaos.community. And that was produced uh, last summer. So and we we don't have access to it, so we cannot get the administrative key. So the person who built it is not responsive so we're gonna um we're gonna be closing down that domain keeping a lot of the content there um but we just this is what we're talking about we just need to close down that as observable from the internet yeah no, no, it's too bad we can't get access to the content key oh we can we have the content most of it's in markdown okay and it's on the community it's in the community repo yeah we okay. just can't get we can't get access to <coughs> publish anymore yeah yeah it was git book so additionally there exactly. is some there's some there's some content that's kind of spread around in other places too so there's there's community handbook content that exists in uh a couple of the other repos that that we really need to pull in and merge so um, you are correct we cannot publish to handbook.chaos.community. And so by just removing that domain from the internet, like that'll take care of that problem. Yeah. But anyway, so that, yeah, that, so that was my thought on it. And I think Elizabeth and I have kind of discussed that in the past. I'm, uh, I, I think we were kind of on the same page, but I would, I would give her, uh, the ability to, uh, adjust or tweak that or or say something different if you if you'd like nope 100 percent agreed so. so i guess the question is is when when would i put a ticket in to the lf to remove that domain you can, i mean if 
after we have the new version up and live, right? Okay, that's fine. I, I was just gonna say, if the content's already in the community repo, you can just delete it now. And the, the uh, problem actually, is, yeah, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Shoya. Yeah, I just wanna say, I, I actually still have, I can access to the added version of of but yes we we discussed this before because i used um i used to develop on gitbook with jash um but the only thing is i don't have the the administration account uh, so i can just i can access and i can add it on gitbook directly but i can't add anyone in i don't have that account so um, uh, but I think that would be that would be helpful to um, migrate the things on Gitbook to any like WordPress or Markdown because yeah. So I think the mic I I can handle the mi migration for thing first. If you can help with that, Shoya, that'd be great. And I would yes. change my I would change what I just said then. If 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 uh, if you have access to it, we should probably keep it open. Uh, just in case you need to copy and paste stuff. Uh, and we do link to that in quite a few places, I think. So we might just want to consider uh, doing a redirect before we totally shut off until we catch them all. That'd be my only. Okay. Totally fair. I think the ticket with the LF wouldn't take that long anyway. So. Yeah, one, one question I had was, um, Kevin, when you said the community repo, putting the markdown files in the community repo, do you mean the website repository or the, because there's a community repository itself, I think? Uh, the, the community repo itself, not the, not the website <clears throat> repo. Okay, so, uh, so if we put it in the community repo, it replicates on the websites. So, we so we have a uh, we can pull markdown from any of the repos into oh, the uh, into the website. Well. And if okay. you'd like, I can show you that real quick on the website. Yeah, please. Uh, here. Oh. So, and I believe you you do have admin access on the website now, correct? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Uh, hold on. Where are we at? Okay, so right now we are on the metrics release page. Can you see that? Yep. Okay, oh, I'm, is this the metrics release page? Sort of, it's a metric. Ah, let's go to metrics definition. So this, this is a little bit. So this is the full release page here. All right, uh, so, and we use, uh, we use a single column setup generally, uh, and we treat uh, uh, and we we go by markdown modules, right? So this section here in white, this is one module. So theoretically, this is one markdown page, and then each time we uh, uh, all of this content comes in on different markdown pages as well, right? So here's the diversity and inclusion. So we are pulling them from different repos. So this this bit here is coming in from the, the common metrics repo. Uh, this bit up top here, this is coming mm -hmm. from the website repo. Uh, and then obviously, as this comes from the evolution repo. And if we were to actually go to the page. So the, the code that we have to pull GitHub markdown onto the website modifies uh it's, it's part of uh wordpress bakery which is one of the uh one of the editing tools right so this and this is wordpress bakery currently and when we come down here you can see that i you can put in raw html uh you can put in text blocks but this is basically the way the website is created it's just a bunch of github modules Right, 
And if we come down and we look at this one specifically, you'll see that we're pulling content from release metrics, tables, metrics, common, markdown. Right, so that tells me that it's the uh, the website repository, and it's metrics tables. So this this markdown is is uh, is populated uh, from the website. However, when we go to other places, uh, it'll be it'll be pulled from different locations. So when we are creating the uh, uh, when we're creating the the, the knowledge base on here, we can pull from the community repo, uh, we can pull from wherever we need to. Uh, so and, and a page can pull from multiple locations. Uh, does that make sense? Yep, it does. So and, and once again, if anyone has any questions about that, I would be happy to, yeah, I just, to answer I just, them because oh, it is it is kind of weird. <laughs> uh, yeah, as, as I, just I said before. Oh, sorry. I'm, yeah, sorry. I thought about on that question. So we have, I think we have the content for the handbook in um, one of the repositories as well. I think there's a repository named handbook. So um, on the chaos um, organization, there's a repository named handbook. I think I've seen that before, but I, I've not really scanned through that repository. So if we have like markdown files, since we are not totally getting rid of the handbook, we have those markdown files there and we are updating stuff. Can we import that repository to another one or we have to, do we create like individual, start creating individual markdown files? I don't know if I'm making sense. Can you repeat the question? So we have, I'm trying to get the link for the handbook repository on chaos organization. So we have that handbook there. I've not scanned through the contents if it's the same thing with what's on the current handbook. So when trying to, when we want to like move contents, do we import the repository or we just create from scratch and start creating those markdown files in a better structure? I think I understand what you're saying, Ruth. Um, so like right now, um, all of the files are here uh, in this hand, or in this repo. And you're wanting to know, are we just gonna move those straight over to the community handbook in the same format and everything, right? Mm -hmm. do, yeah, do we like import or import? Cause I think there's a way to import repositories into another repository. Oh, I didn't know oh, that. Yeah, I think there's something like that. Importing like the content of another repository into one. Into one. Let me see. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, yeah, that's. Oh, well, yeah, I think we'll figure that out later. Just. I definitely I, I wouldn't want to use the uh, the current folder slash file structure that's there now. Uh, so the, the content, most of the content, I think, is going to be usable. But those those the folders, if you think of those folders as like chapters in a book. Uh, yeah, they don't they're not they don't really tell me what I'm. Uh, Looking out for. Yeah, they're not they're not as explicit as I would like them to be, I suppose. Is, is. Are you talking about these folders? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I would uh I think I think a lot of the content is going to be good, but I think the, the when you folder, say content, you mean like the markdown file. The markdown basically. itself, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. The the folder and file structure. I think we we need to create a folder and file structure that's very very explicit and and acts as uh, as navigation for the handbook, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it does. Yep. 
so then does this material all this i understand that you're saying like redesign the structure a little bit does this stay in this folder or would this move to the community folder i think it all moves to the community folder okay so we get rid of the community handbook folder yeah okay yes. yeah we want one point of one point of truth right so the the community handbook is that place that you should go to for templates and for okay. how to contribute and so this would just have a folder probably called handbook or the community repo is the handbook itself and all of those uh explicitly named folders drop into the community handbook or into the community repo that would be an option as well okay yeah and i think we could merge, like put all this um outreach um programs into one folder or something yep we are yeah we're gonna do that <clears throat> like all of these yep yeah yeah and i would and i would consider that to be part of these are all documents that i think are helpful to have in the community handbook well not or well, maybe not the interest the templates yeah. the templates yes uh, okay okay Okay. Survey's done, by the way. I put it in Slack and hey. I dropped on. There you go. There you go. Taking the rest of the day off. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go take it a bunch of times to skew the results. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's very helpful, Kevin. I know where everything's at. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I I actually don't know where, where most things are at. <laughs> Take, takes me a while to find things too. Okay, so do we have like, Kevin, do you have like thoughts on next steps? Uh, so I, I think this was really, this is, this was really uh, a helpful conversation to get us started on uh, coordinating the knowledge base work with the website work. Uh, I wish, uh, I wish uh, Yash was here. Uh, cause he's doing the knowledge base work on the website. Uh, when does, when does that Officially, when does Google Summer of Code officially start? I know this is, we're in kind of the, the in-between period, right? Yeah, we're in community bonding right now. Okay. When does that, when does that end, Elizabeth? Do you know? Like a couple weeks? Yeah, I was looking at the calendar. <laughs> Since I put it all in the calendar, hold on one minute and I will look. So I'm not worried about him coming to meetings. He comes to meetings. No, no. Uh, so then if we if if we're gonna like Ruth and Shoya who are part of season of docs um I like Elizabeth's proposal with Enoch to like open issues to describe like components of things that he's working on where if Ruth and Shoya if you follow that same model where do you think well there's Yash speak <laughs> he heard you <laughs> it's always weird how that works do you think that posting issues in the community folder kevin makes the most sense i do yeah okay yeah it works with me too okay yes i agree with that okay and so maybe ruth and shoya like just over the next week or so, maybe to start thinking about like first initial tasks or first steps. Like Shoya, like yours might be around like how to shut down the current handbook. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like how to save that content and and slowly shut it down. Um, and maybe the issues associated with that, and then. Ruth, I mean, maybe listening to Kevin talk, like thinking about like what structure could be. Yeah. Something like yes. that. I have several things uh, in mind, uh, and they 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 are, they are not like uh, they have to be happening at the same time. Maybe they are 
step by step. Um, but yes, I agree with the migration and thinking about re rethink about the whole structure of the community re repo. Things it is go going to be the if we agree that the community repo is going to be the whole structure of the handbook. So the second is structure, and the third is um, review the current content content of the handbook. Perfect. Yeah, we could Zura, we could meet like this week or next early next week to also pick up that yes. out. That'd be and great. Probably give updates next meeting since this happens bi-weekly so yeah and i was actually just listening to ruth you and shaya talk i mean like it's not like i was thinking if you're opening issues to track things to do like if you two coordinate work and open an issue that's like both, both of you together that's completely fine it's not like shoya you have to have a set of issues that are uniquely to you and ruth you have to have a set of issues that doesn't make sense to me so just we can have like one or two issues that we're all collectively looking at. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so it looks like we do have we have next steps for uh, the uh, community handbook. Uh, from a website design standpoint, I would like to wait and see what some of those responses are in the poll we just sent out. Uh, and at, at some point, at some point, I want to start mapping those user paths, uh, kind of wireframe them out. Uh, but I think the next step on the website for me, uh, you've you've shared a website that you like, mm -hmm. and you've and you've talked about uh, the key features that you like about it. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think I'm going to I think the idea uh here would be i'm going to create a prototype front page based on that website that you've shared using cool. some of those the design elements that you said you've liked that'd be great uh we can look at that and then we can tweak the design of the main page based on that that'd be cool so, okay i like that i think that'd be that'd be great too because it then it gives us something to talk against you know like right now we can't really use our current website as like a as a step think something to step forward from like we're not just changing the current website we're like redesigning it so having at least the start of a redesign would be really cool page uh does anyone on the call need or want uh access to the wordpress site i know yash you're gonna need it yep. uh, would anyone else like it i mean i don't i have it already i think you do <clears throat> never been used but you that's not it. true actually <laughs> <laughs> what, what did you do i mean i'll move it over there with you <laughs> well yeah but you don't yeah, that's that's, know, admin that's, that's outside of WordPress. You have, yeah. you have host, host admin access. Yeah, I feel like I've changed something in WordPress, but you did the newsletter for me, Sean. Oh, that's right. Huh. I did that's the that. newsletter for that one time when Elizabeth <laughs> was out. Shoya was asking to have. I totally forgot about that. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes, I will. Uh, can you give me uh, what email address would you like me to use? And Elizabeth, you should probably have access, not for oh, changing. She, she already does. Oh, okay. I was going to say. Okay. Not to change stuff, just, I don't know. <laughs> like, as community manager, you should have the keys to, I think, everything. Well, she, she's welcome to change stuff. Wow. <laughs> Uh, oh no.
what username would you like me to use just for just sure, your yeah. first name um uh so yeah maybe <laughs> okay yeah same question for you email address and username yeah i'll drop it in the minutes and username maybe yes if not then the full name yes prakash okay uh, so I'm going to give you access, and what's going to happen is you're going to get an email uh, It says you have access. Uh, however, I'm going to set the password to something crazy, so you're going to have to go in and, uh, and reset your password. So just uh, select that you forgot your password. Okay. And did you drop your email address into the chat? I just did. Okay, cool. Does someone want to take over for me while I'm? Uh, we, actually, I suppose we could be done. Yeah, we're we're done. Okay. Uh, let me know when you're ready to chat. Yash, about uh, uh, I know we're we're in the in between period, so I'm not going to ask you to do anything right now. Um, but let me know when you want to. Uh, uh, yeah, sure. Kind of chat about beginning the work. Oh uh, yeah, I thought of dropping a mail. Actually, I missed the meeting almost today, so maybe I'll drop a mail. All right. Well, I'm just gonna in. I'm just going to uh, add them into the uh, the admin here in the background. So I think we could we can end this meeting. Uh, don't uh, if you leave, do not shut down the meeting because I will lose access to the chat. And I'm a yeah, whoever so the maybe control, I guess that'll yeah, be a little maybe, bit. Yeah, trans, yeah, transfer host to me or or, yeah. or just stick around until the common common meeting is next, right? Yeah, yeah I will is. stop recording though. Okay. No, I mean, let's record the, the, 